Okay, Gary. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's another beautiful day, man. How are you feeling today? Hey, we are one day away from Friday. Oh, is it? <laughs> no, well, today's today's Wednesday. <laughs> today's ah, Wednesday. Tomorrow is your birthday, bro. Oh, it's, it's, wait. What is today? Today is the fifth, sixth. Today's fifth. the fifth. Fifth. Oh no, Saturday is your birthday. Seventh. Yeah, today's the Saturday. It's my birthday. The seventh. Hey, man. Yeah. It's the day Take of champions. Away. Listen, man, old age is approaching me, sir. And I can feel the energy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you, by the way, for the birthday wishes, man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Yas Daily Show. We try to bring you news on crypto adoption. And when we're not doing that, we are sharing motivation and education through shared knowledge and success. That's a beautiful thing to be doing. If you ask me, okay, Kenny, what do you say? Back. Exactly. Better than that. Exactly. Well, today on the show, we're going to be talking about the IRS seizing 1.2 billion in crypto, Fidelity joins mining, and DeFi on the rise. But before we do that, we would like to let everyone know that we are giving away Cardano. $500. $500. <laughs> Dude, I can't get over that. Right? Every time we do that, I think of like uh, Family Feud. <laughs> That's what it was, and it's amazing. We're giving away five hundred dollars worth of Cardano once we get to five thousand subscribers. All you have to do is like and subscribe to our channel. And once we get there, we're going to be giving two hundred and fifty dollars to two random winners. Enough of that. Let's jump into the markets. Choo choo, can you yes, eat house, guys? I'm not sure what's going on with that. The up update yesterday, I'm sure it's still going on, but those gas fees are not going down at all. Uh, but hey. I have to say, though, Ethereum dominance is on the rise, uh, currently at 8.8%, while Bitcoin is losing its dominance by 0.4%. Interesting, right. interesting outlook. That said, the market cap is back on the rise, uh, 1.6, up 2.4%. So, you know, interesting matters going on there. As we said uh, pre previous two days, uh, money is going in and out so fast. We're trying to figure out where the money is going, which we can trace. Absolutely. Well, there's been a lot of adoption lately. So I have to say maybe folks are coming out of their their uh, uh, stable coins and getting into into in, into either the main coin or the odd coins, which kind of explain, you know, what's going on there with the uh, dominant situation. Bitcoin on the rise in the meantime, you know, as, as we said, it's kind of moving sideways. One second is up a few cents, the other second is down. In the last seven days, it's down 4.6%. That happens in the stock market. That's normal. Right. Um, yeah. So, yeah, not so much is going on here. But guess what's rising slowly but surely? Mm. Cardano. Don't be, a, don't, don't be how you are slacking, man. You know, it we've been rising. talking about this since Cardano was $1.20, maybe even lower. Absolutely. So by now you'll be made 16 cents per share. I know that's slow, but you can take that, stake it, make some money. Anyway, don't slack on that free money. But Cardano is still on the rise, actually a lot more stable than the rest of them. Uh, let's go down there see, see what our uh, cyber truck and uh, <laughs> LCAP is doing. Um, Shiba Inu, way on the downside. Oh, man. Oh, uh, that's niche. The she, cyber, she, the she cyber truck. Man. Hey, listen, man. This is how we put it, man. Over the past seven days, the cyber truck has moved 0.4% away from you, sir. 0.4% <laughs> away from you. Oh, man, that is interesting. Hey, listen, man. Diamond hands. This kind of reminds me of buying penny stocks versus buying value stocks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just man, see that if, one dream. If, if you bought penny stocks before, man, you know what the game is, man. Hold and hold and hold. It might work out. Or it might never work out. It's almost like buying a lottery ticket. <laughs> but, you know, who knows? Well, then, we jump into some crypto news. Uh, the IRS has seized 1.2 billion. That's billion That's with a, a B. Money, man. B. Hey. It's a letter B. 1.2 billion worth of cryptocurrency this fiscal year. Here's what's happened to it. The U.S. government regularly holds auctions for its stockpile of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin and other cryptocurrency it seized and then holds in crypto wallets. It kicked off with the 2013 uh, takedown of the Silk Road. Are you familiar with the Silk Road? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna find out more about it pretty soon. But yeah, yes, it uh, exists. 
that is oil, that is where i used to sell my spare body parts man listen man you know when you were born in africa you were so healthy that you come with extra parts so i had an extra limb which was attached to my back i just detached it <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh interviews with current and former federal agents and prosecutors suggest that the u.s has no plans to step back from its side of the hustle as a crypto broker i mean that's mm-hmm. that's that's really a good way to put it man it's hustle as a crypto side broker hustle. Because that's really See, what even it the is US government the day, itself man. has a side also. You know, look, man, they can, they can, they can uh, sugar it and flip it and put it all how they want, man. Listen, you're now in the business of selling crypto, US government. You know, so that's what I say. <laughs> exactly, and you know, you, you speak about this quite a bit too, because a lot of times, like people make it seem like it's something fancy going on, but the reality is. The U.S. government has a wallet, so that's exactly. one thing that people should realize. You don't have a wallet? Hmm. Think about it. The U.S. government has a wallet. Hey. They're probably sticking that money too. Who knows, right? They probably. <laughs> why? Why wouldn't they? <laughs> why wouldn't they? Is, is there a reason not to? And yeah. then they sell it. So you can, if they can do all of that, then you over here sitting on the side saying this this sucker ain't nothing. I'm exactly. sorry for you, man. Hey. <laughs> not financial you know, advice, but hey. <clears throat> Something just popped up to my mind. You know how there's the whole issue with the funding of the police, etc., etc. First of all, I think we need police to keep some order in society. Yeah. But think about this. What if the government just distributed this uh, crypto to every police department? And it's like, hey, now you all have, you know, two, three bitcoins, whatever. Your finances are on you. Never ask us for money again. Find someone to trade your crypto for you to grow money for the department. What do you think uh, of this? That'd be a good too much of a mix up between states and states and businesses. Um, also. Well, maybe maybe the police department can have their own finance team and they can yes. run their own operations without yes. necessarily hiring a contractor or a company to run the show. Exactly. Hey, listen, actually, you know what? I'm going to go to my local police department and speak to them and be like, hey, listen, I know you guys have a finance department. Every police department has a finance department. Yeah, yeah, what are the rules against... Right. So they have to do what they need to do to raise money, right? So yeah. instead of red light cameras and speeding cameras and speeding tickets... Oh, I see what you're saying. They make their because ultimately, they do this stuff to generate... Cameras. Right. They do this stuff to generate revenue, man. I cannot... Yeah. Listen. How many lives has a speeding ticket saved? I don't think it's me. Yeah, you be having a lot of crazy ideas. Come on, man. Come on, bro. Listen, you ladies got and this gentlemen. Idea from yes. <laughs> Listen, first of all, let me pull back the brakes on this one. Okay? This idea, you guys hear it here first. So if it pops up anywhere, I'm suing wherever has the idea. Because it's mine. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hey, listen. Listen, okay, I can, I can, I can definitely engage in some consulting in this situation now. Come on, now, this, this Actually, idea is that's are... not a bad idea. Just hey. tell the feds, don't, don't send us the budget, don't send us the money, send it to us on crypto, Listen, and then we'll man. run the show from there. Yeah. Let's not talk about it too much, man. We'll refine that idea offline. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm out here. We'll refine that idea. Fidelity buys seven point four percent of Bitcoin mining company Marathon. Uh, marathon digital holdings across multiple funds. This is interesting. Talk to us, man. Hey, I'm just saying, Fidelity is seen something that a lot of the other funds are not saying. So, like, if you have, I used to have, I think, no, I don't have them anymore. Right. Hmm. I used to have some Fidelity ETFs in my IRA account. Right. And what people don't know is that they will eventually start getting introduced to crypto without even knowing that they're getting introduced. So, if. Mm. Fidelity is buying a mining company. That means that they're most likely focusing on getting paid in transaction fees and all these other interesting ways once you become a mining company in the exchange itself. So they're looking at the uh, the, 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 the value chain of crypto and they're right. trying to figure out where the most money can be made at, even if something was to go down. So you can either buy the coin or you could just mine the coin. That way, no matter what happens to the coin, you're still making money. So they went for the beginning stage of the value chain of crypto and pr- provided value there. That way, no matter what happened to their asset in the coin itself, they're Absolutely. still going to be making money as a miner or Absolutely. as an investor in the mining company. 
and they'll be pro they'll be providing some uh, index funds that has some exposure to crypto i think that that is incredible yeah. right uh the little party which i have highlighted on the article it says the recent purchase exemplifies a growing trend among institutions and individual investors of gaining exposure to the crypto industry through traditional equity or debt securities say so, i say go for the jugular man go right so, into the crypto yeah no so if, if they don't does that mean the crypto companies can then eventually trade equities or securities in the market right as a synthetic because if you can do it backwards why can't you do it forward that is a very good one but i think as much as these things are kind of like coming they're kind of like aligning themselves they're moving closer to be specific we have the way crypto is being treated it's almost like they want it to be kind of treated like stocks mm -hmm. right and i think for me personally i feel like i feel like <laughs> I believe that it's better to keep these things separate because I would hate to see the regulations applied to stocks, to the traditional yeah. markets be applied yeah. to crypto. So right. uh, it's an interesting situation, but I think that it would be nice to thread this carefully, but keeping both of them uh, separate because it's it's just not the same thing. Um, DeFi tokens overtake Ethereum's rise as network hard fork looms. The price of Ethereum has soared above $2,750 for the first time in two months before retreating. Popular DeFi tokens are, however, still on the move. Over the past couple months, Ethereum has been falling, sliding, dipping, and so on and so forth, right? <laughs> and there is a lot of DeFi tokens that are built on the Ethereum network. And as you know, when Ethereum starts running up, a lot of those coins tend to uh, run as well, right? Kind of gain their value from Ethereum as well. So as Ethereum has been running up recently, uh, one thing that I believe that people will do is, well, not that I believe because we we're also we also kind of do some of that, right? We buy the cheaper coins that are built on Ethereum so that when it starts moving up, we have the ability to make more gains compared to buying a much more expensive coins. And I believe this is one of the reasons why these coins, who, the DeFi coins on Ethereum, will still be running even at a point in time when Ethereum pulls back. Your thoughts? Yeah, DeFi, DeFi is super popular in the market right now. Um, right. So the value of those DeFi coins are not only gained from, from, from Ethereum itself, but, but, but from the usage of those specific coins. Right. Um, so as long as the functionalities, you know, not just, you know, the DeFi functionalities are being used, like staking and farming or whatever that is, you know. Uh, so there was a company that did a, uh, a mortgage loan lending through the DeFi app the other day. Right. Once those become a full functional token by themselves, then they can kind of slowly detach from Ethereum uh, and then they can do their own thing. Uh, yeah. So Absolutely. This is awesome. This is awesome news. Speaking of speaking of decoupling, um, I think Ethereum possibly may have decoupled from Bitcoin. It looked like it, but not really. It just looks like it's a slower version of what is going mm -hmm. on Bitcoin. I can't yeah. wait to see a full decoupling because then things really start to um, grow legs yeah. of their own. Yeah, yeah. Right. Scribble, um, scribble, scribble time. Scribble analysis. Hey, listen, Bitcoin currently trading at thirty eight thousand. One hundred and fourteen dollars and twenty eight cents. Okay, Kenny. Yeah, this just basically goes back to that chat of okay, what what range is the price gonna move? moving at? Is it gonna be a drastic move upwards? Is it is it gonna go downwards? Is it moving sideways? And I think we mentioned yesterday uh, during the last uh, conversation that you know that that's a major support line. Mm -hmm. So it's either going to move all that sideways, and then you know if the news continues to trend, you know, the MAs, the RSI, all all of them kind of look like okay, we don't know where it's going. So this 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 two candles right here is an indecision candle, so we don't really know what direction it's going, but it's still holding the support line mm -hmm. in a way. So um, if it does cross that white line, the thirty six thousand dollars downward, we're gonna go back into a bearish market. Absolutely. But I don't think that's gonna happen i mean that's the thought process that's my analysis i cannot focus the future I'm not financial right. advisor but what i'm seeing here is still kind of a, kind of like a sideways movement it's mm -hmm. gonna hold it should hold between that 41 and that 38,000 range absolutely well looking at this I, I definitely see what you're saying there um i'm just going to add what i what i see but i'm gonna more take more of a bearish stance 
looking at this situation here, um, the green candle, all good and all, the concern I have is that this red candle is almost taking out that green candle as it sits right now. If that red candle should completely take out this green candle here, yeah. more than likely the next candle is going to be a, a downward yeah. move. I guess I'm watching out for that, right? Just keeping an eye out for that to see what happens there. Um, however, I will say that currently it's holding that support level pretty decently. If it does not take out, if that uh, green candle is not taking out there, then uh, I think that support level holds and very much everything that you said, right? We start to see that that uh, the candle's holding here at this 38K level and potentially move up again 50 k to the target on this one i would say ethereum massive move from ethereum what are your thoughts sir yeah so we were talking before before the video and i think this is exactly what what we mentioned yesterday on the call on the video right and it's actually playing out um it's still a, a super bullish move right now uh it, at, it i'm not sure if that was the test that does not right. look like a test right now that still looks like an upward movement so the test really has not recorded with the tarot we right. thought it was going to occur but it did a little bounce downward and then went back up that's not a full test so it's still a bullish move and this movement looks like a previous move movement from la in the air uh so with, with this this looks good for Ethereum. absolutely i would say that this these uh, two candles here, you have the small red candle and then the green candle that took out the uh, red candle yeah. right from yesterday. I will call this a test right here. It's not strong enough for a test. True, it's it's not. But, but, well, no, wait, what am I saying? It's not. Here's the thing. When I say test, I'm referring to testing a pullback, yeah. right? If you remember the two-legged pullback situation, sometimes a test may not necessarily need to pull all the way back. If you think about it, if you see when you do when we do ninjas in the morning, when we do VWAP trading, right? Mm -hmm. And we wait for two retest, right? Sometimes that second retest does not come all the way below VWAP. It just tests above VWAP and then continues to move up again. Right? Yeah, no. You might have something going on there because if that red was your 50 day. Yes. And the green was the 200 day. Right. Then we have something. The blue one is the 200 day. day moving average. The blue one is the 200 day moving average. Okay, so, so we, the cross. we so are here the cross. Yeah, we are above the 200 day moving average. We are also above the 50 day moving average. Oh, uh, all right. Well, bullish we go. Right. So <laughs> we are we are bullish. That's really happening. You know what I mean? It's just more so like how far are we going to extend? Of course, we don't want to overextend. That's not healthy for the market, but yeah let's, let's 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 go back and look at the past real quick okay let's go back to the past here yeah right there um but you know in may, the may in, may in the, may may let's see. then go up go may, may and then scroll up 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 yeah oh, i dude. think i just that's I just, sort of what's going on yeah more. that right Ooh, there oh yes 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 look at that move okay so this would be an example of what i'm essentially explaining right which also, by the way, uh, if you watched a couple of videos ago, I brought up the concept of the two-legged pullback, right? Yep. This red candle uh, on May 4th will be a pullback, technically. And then there's a green candle, and then these other two red candles here on May 7th would technically be considered a pullback as well. So you have pullback, pullback, up. I would call that second red a doge undecided. So it attempted the second one. Back. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it is. It is like yeah. a. Well, w with the uh, candles of indecision, wouldn't those usually end up white, white looking ish? Yeah, I mean, this it's still it's still there. It's an inside yeah. candle, was what I would say. Yeah, the 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 the, the buyers and nobody won that bought it really. I I would say maybe the sellers won, but. Right. I would say the, the, that that previous green candle is still holding strong. So those two candles are just uh, trying to pull you down. But then exactly, make, the, these yeah. two because what has to happen is that these red candles coming up here need to take out the previous green candle. Yep. For Seriously, it to be a downward it, uh, move. It, it did not. It did not. Uh, the next green candle there absolutely blew out the red candles, yep. and so continues so move if to that the upside. Happens now, if this same thing happens now, then we should it's have some serious. Absolutely. A similar thing oh, can happen. Because this right? red did not take out that green. Yes. There we go. So I, I still think that, hey, this possibility is, is out there. It's on the table. You see what I mean? 
So, loving it. Moving on to some Cardano, currently trading at one dollars and thirty-five cents. Okay, Kenny, let me point out something, man, because these people are gonna put some respect on my name today. Please. <laughs> Um, Cardano, listen, I kind of put a price target the other day. I said this thing was going to hit 140. You said it was going to kiss it. Yes. Look at that. Look at that week there, man. It, 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 it gave, it gave her a little peck. Just right there, bro. It just, just, <laughs> hey man, just with the, with the pinky. Okay. He just approached it and he was like, yeah, you know, but <laughs> Cardano did hit that 140 mark. Your thoughts on this one, sir? Hey. It's extremely bullish. Um, it's very, I think it's a slow version of Ethereum. Right. Um, that red candle did come though. It did not take out the green as well. So it's not taking it out. There's a possible further movement upward. Absolutely. I think that could hold there. Um, there's no reason to believe that that is just going to start screaming to the downside. So if it holds, listen, the previous all time high on Cardano was $2 and 46 cents. Yeah, I am fully expecting to blow past that past. at some point. Okay, so we're just going to keep adding in and we're going to hold for as long as it takes. But it is a good sign uh, knowing that, you know, the technical analysis is it's working out. It's moving in the right direction. So um, for now, I mean, I would just say that this is if we drew a trend line on this one, uh, we could say it's moving up. Right. It's yeah, I mean, look at the MAs. Um, arrow the here. price is still above the 200, right? So yes, that's, price that's, just crossed the 200 there. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, the price is now above the, 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 the 50, which is another good news. So that's extremely bullish. All right, so that's my trend oh, line. Oh, look at that. It's crossing, it's crossing your yellow line up there. So that could even now create a spike upward. Absolutely. Once it crosses that, it's going to push upward even much faster. There we go. So if it holds above that line, I'll say, you know, upward trend continues. Yeah. If it breaks below it, well, there's only two things that can happen. It's either really going to crash or sideways. we're just moving sideways on that one. Well, other than that, uh, RSI looks pretty decent. It's not overbought, right? Currently sitting at 57%. And it's not rubber bot, it's not rubber soul, it's just engine. It's just somewhere there in the middle, right? It's a beautiful place to be. TTM doing its thing. Any final thoughts, sir? I've been saying thank you a lot lately. Uh, our, our our subscription has been slowly growing. We're very grateful. Uh, Amen. We would love to give away this money as quickly as possible so that you can grow along with, with uh, Cardano. Right. Uh, so we need you guys to just like and subscribe. I think... You know, if you have anything that we can do better on, let us mm. know. But we're here with you guys. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's that's all I have to say. Hey, man, I'm just going to double down on what Kenny said, man. We've been saying thank you a lot lately. I'll never get tired of saying thank you either because we know that your time is valuable. You could be doing anything else, but you choose to spend it with us. And that's always a good thing. It makes us excited. Yes, one of them things right there. Sideways, sideways, thank you. Well... Uh, on to next time, ladies and gentlemen, before we depart, <coughs> one more reminder that we are giving away $500, $500 worth of Cardano. <laughs> 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 Once we get to 5,000 subscribers, two winners, $250 each, and all you have to do is like and subscribe. And that will be all. On to next time. Ladies and gentlemen, Chevron Brazen, out. Do it.